Hi everyone, welcome. This is Career Services, Career Fair Training for CAS majors. How many people are CAS majors here? Great. So if you're not a CAS major, that's okay. You can still be here um, for this event. We're just gonna be talking about Career Fair in general, what you should be doing, different tactics. And then I'm gonna introduce Ashley Algen. She is from Total Quality Logistics and she's gonna be our co-presenter tonight. So the reason that we have her co-present with us is not only do we want you to hear from career services perspectives, what you should be doing at Career Fair, but also hearing from a recruiter's perspective, what she's seen that has been successful, what has not been successful, and tips for you. So if that sounds good, I'll have Ashley kind of talk to you a little bit about TQL and what her recommendations are for Career Fair. Thank you. How many seniors are here tonight? A lot of seniors, okay, any juniors? Okay, any sophomores or freshmen? Okay, a handful, so you guys are here to kind of prep, uh, prepare and get ready for your next upcoming years, uh, networking at Career Fair this year. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, as Jeff mentioned, I'm with TQL, our to or Total Qual Quality Logistics. Um, I will be at Re Career Fair and we recruit for our Logistics Sales Account Executive position. Um, we actually recruit across all majors. So for any of you guys who are kind of interested or maybe thinking about exploring a career in sales, feel free to stop by our booth. Um, we are hiring for interns as well as full-time positions upon graduation. So uh, don't be intimidated uh, by the sales. You know, we hire business majors, but we also hire a lot of non-business, a lot of arts and sciences majors as well. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, one thing I really wanted to focus on tonight was the topic of branding yourself. Anyone have any ideas of what that means? Yeah. Make yourself look better. Yeah, making yourself stand out, right? Ma being top of mind for um, your network. And um, whenever you know positions come up that may be a good fit for you, making sure that your entire network knows, hey, that's a right position for Joe, you know, or whoever that may be. So um, we're going to kind of go through ways to brand yourself and how to utilize that at Career Fair. So first, I'll start out with a quick overview of TQL and who we are um, in the community. Anyone ever heard of TQL? A handful? Okay, okay. Um, we'll give you guys a quick overview and a little bit of history about us. Um, we were actually founded in 1997 by Ken Oakes. Um, he is still our CEO, and um, he worked previously in the produce industry. Um, and he uh, was exposed to logistics, um, companies moving uh, produce in the market, and wasn't really happy with what he saw. He felt like, you know, if I worked in this industry, I could be really good at it. I could be better than these other companies. They're not providing the customer service that I need in order to be successful, successful in my role. So he did something about it. Um, he depleted his bank accounts to start his own company, um, stayed open 24-7, which is something that still... Um, sets us apart in our market, um, so that way he can provide the utmost customer service. So just to kind of tell you what TQL does, we're a third-party logistics company. So what that means is we seek out customers, any kind of customer or company, who has a product that needs to be shipped from point A to point B. Um, we sell them our service. We say, hey, um, XYZ Apple Farmer in Illinois, um, you have a load of apples that needs to get from Illinois to Florida. Why don't you let me take that off your hands? You can focus on growing your apples, and let me focus on providing the truck to go pick them up and deliver. I'll coordinate everything. The company says, okay, that's great. So that's just a quick example. So once we make the sale, we then find a truck, and we are non-asset based. So we work with outside carriers, truck drivers, um, trucking companies, to coordinate with them. We negotiate rates. Hey, they'll go pick up the load of apples and deliver it where it needs to be on time. In the meantime, um, our, we kind of act as a liaison. So we're a third party, kind of the middleman between the customer and the truck. And once the truck delivers the apples or whatever product they may be delivering, we'll then get back with the customer and let them know, hey, your product has arrived on time. So that's just a little bit about what we do. So as you can imagine, and as you all have seen on the roads, uh, trucks never stop moving. Right? So tw being open 24-7 is a huge uh, competitive advantage that we have in the market. So that's why he decided to stay 24-7. Um, and he hired some of his friends to work for him. Um, they took turns working nights, um, sleeping in the office in order to accommodate their customers. 
at the beginning, the main focus was shipping produce, because that's what he had experience in, right? He started with what he knew. Um, eventually, they began shipping other commodities, and we, we ship everything few and far between uh, nowadays. Um, in our first year, we hit one million in sales. We were very successful, and the company grew completely on employee referrals. And we still take employee referrals very seriously today. Um, we actually have a re referral program in place within the company, so uh, we like to keep a nice, tight-knit, kind of family-oriented uh, company. And then in 2009, we actually opened our first satellite office, which is kind of like a branched office in Chicago. Uh, now, we actually have 18 satellite, or 18, we opened our, our uh, latest one about two weeks ago in Houston. So we have 18 satellite offices uh, nationwide. Just a little bit more about us. We are the nation's largestly privately, our largest privately held third-party logistics company in the nation. And we are the second largest 3PL in the nation uh, overall. Our market size is about 350 billion and we have more than 2,000 employees across the country. Um, we are a sales organization in the transportation industry. So 77% of our company is focused on sales. 77% of our employees are within the sales realm, and we do promote very heavily from within. Um, in 2012, last year, we had 1.3 billion in sales, and like I mentioned before, we are not asset based. We don't we don't own trucks. We have our buildings with our employees inside of them, and we we find trucks from other companies to coordinate uh, to to move our uh, our freight loads. So. Now that you guys know a little bit about us, we'll talk about branding yourself. And I may kind of connect it back to TQL because that's the experience that I have um, or that I've seen students branding themselves within our company. So um, I just wanted to outline six key steps to building your personal brand to help you guys get started with that. So we'll start with the first step. Find your niche. So how many of you guys are here today and you maybe don't know exactly what you want to do when you graduate? A lot of you. I was in the same boat. I had no idea. I was a public relations major, so uh, arts and sciences, and I didn't know what I wanted to do. I started on marketing, switched to public relations. I thought, well, maybe I'd like to be an event planner. I don't know. Maybe I'll be a writer. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll switch my major again, right? I know it's tough. I graduated. I wasn't really 100% sure what I wanted to do, but I knew that my field was broad. And because of that, it gave me lots of opportunities and lots of industries to explore. So think about where you want to be. And I know kind of narrowing this down can be hard. So really take some time to think about it, especially you seniors. Um, if you can start to narrow that down, that's going to be pretty helpful for you. That way you can use your resources um, to find additional opportunities. So assess where you are now. Think about what your strengths are. What are you good at? Um, what are you known for? Are you known for, um, if you're in a, a class and you're in a group project, people want to be in your group because you take the lead? Do you have top leadership skills? If you do, you know, that's a key selling point, okay? What are you passionate about? What do you like to do? How many of you guys are in a fraternity or sorority? A few of you. Are any of you guys very passionate about your philanthropies? For some of you, uh, it's kind of drilled into you, right? Um, or volunteer for certain um, organizations, and you've become very passionate about that. Think about um, think about that. What do you want to be? Anybody know what they want to be yet? What do you want to be? As far as like a career, mm -hmm. um, I really want to work in human resources. Okay, that's awesome. So you already got step one down. <laughs> Um, and down here, we have this quote. I thought it was kind of fitting. Done right, you'll be promoting your brand for many years. So make sure you choose an identity you'll be able to live with for a long time. Okay. Once you start building that brand, it's going to start spreading. So if you decide to change, it may be a little bit harder to rebrand. For instance, think about in the media, Miley Cyrus. Right? What's going on with her right now? That's spreading like wildfire, right? So just think about when, when, you, when things happen, um, people are going to hear about it. And uh, you want to keep your brand... Uh, nice and shiny. So um, tips for your brand. So don't build your brand based on what the market need is. Build your brand around yourself, what you're interested in. Be, your brand needs to be an extension of you. 
okay? So don't look at the market and fill a void because you may not be happy. You don't want to transform yourself into something because what if you get there and you're like, ah, oh, I really wish that I would have stuck with nonprofit or whatever it is that you're passionate about. So keep that in mind. Um, your brand needs to be a, an extension of you, but it doesn't have to be every aspect of you, okay? Pick your top talents and stick with that. And then um, a brand identity that displays your every interest rarely works. So pick what your top qualities are and build your brand around those uh, key skills. Number two, is your brand marketable? Okay, so how, uh, what need can you satisfy better than anyone else? What makes you stand apart from others? Okay, think about that. And if you're not sure, ask your um, peers, your mentors, your professors, your parents. They know you and they may see key skills and key qualities that you have that maybe you haven't noticed. Um, how much are people willing to pay you for satisfying that need? Right? I mean, the goal here is to find a career. Somebody who's going to pay you to do that. So um, find something that you're exceptionally uh, exceptional at that maybe stands you apart from others, makes you more competitive in the market. So think about these personal brands. Derek Jeter, Oprah Winfrey, Howard Stern, right? Uh, Steve Jobs. Would you guys say they have pretty strong brands? You guys have all heard of them, correct? It's pretty strong brands. Um, think about their branding. Are they, is it a positive brand or a negative brand? Um, just something to think about. And what public figures have personal brands that you guys admire? Any examples? Come on, somebody can give me a good example. Miley Cyrus. <laughs> you admire Miley Cyrus? <laughs> it does, yeah, it does, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Any others? Yeah. Beyonce. Beyonce, yeah, okay. All right, so we can pull out those brands that we admire and that we see people who are successful. So um, it's kind of nice to see that brand building really does work, right? Got them where they are. So step three, seek professional help. Through the branding pro process, you might need help. Um, what types of professionals could help you with building your brand? Career center, students, development staff, okay? Professors and deans, of course. Uh, they see your work. They, they may see attributes of you through your work that you produce or leadership qualities in the classroom. Um, project skills, what you're good at, they may see that more so um, than looking in at yourself. They, they can, or an outside view, sometimes it's nice to have that. Mentors. If you don't, I would suggest considering uh, getting one, especially when you think about how you want to brand yourself, where you want to be in the future. Try to find a mentor in that field. Um, they've been there. They've been through the ranks, and um, you can kind of use them to gauge their advice and see what they would do in your situations. Your parents, of course, they've known you forever. They know you best, usually. Um, community leaders, coaches. Hit them up because they see a lot of those um, intangible skills that you have, you know, discipline, competitive, um, resilience, things of that nature. So, peers, um, you guys have friends, right? Yeah, you use them. Okay, you hang out with them. You spend a lot of time with a lot of time with them. Um, HR recruiting professionals. So, um, say you go on an interview, or today at Career Services we have mock interviews. And there was a lot of recruiters there, and they, we had students come in and practice interview with us. And we were giving them um, feedback. Oh, well, this is how you answered this question, but you could have answered it a little bit better if you would have done this. So take advantage of those resources, and anytime you can get in front of a recruiter or an HR professional, take advantage of it. That's free advice um, that you can use at your next interview. Okay. Um, I'll, my contact info will be at the end. And then um, how do you think... How, I mean, do you feel like these professionals can, can help? Yeah? No? Yeah? Okay. So, step four, promotion. So, you found your niche, um, you've gotten feedback on your brand, um, you kind of thought about other people's brands, how you want to develop yours. So, now you need to promote your brand, okay? Test your skills and get feedback. It's an opportunity to sell your products and services. So, what this means, Say, for instance, you want to be a salesman. You want to go into sales. 
um, you want to reach out to your network, talk to your professors, talk to your parents, your mentors. Let them know, hi, yeah, I'm really looking for a career in sales. I'm very disciplined, competitive, and driven. I feel like this role will really suit me. Um, if you happen to hear of anything out there, let me know. And if you um, are constantly portraying that professional demeanor, you know, you join the sales team or a sales organization on campus, that's going to be something else to kind of add to your resume, that people are going to see that and they're going to, it's going to reflect, oh yeah, she, she really does want sales, you know? Um, so pick a topic that with aligns with how you want to be branded and develop a speech and prepare to present, okay? So this is an elevator pitch. Anyone ever heard of an elevator pitch? A handful of you guys, okay? So it's a brief personal advertisement, okay? It's engaging and captivating, and you can use this during job interviews, career services. Anytime you run into an employer on campus, even if it's a company or a recruiter that you feel like maybe doesn't match your brand, I guarantee you they know somebody in the field. Recruiters network as well. Okay. Today at mock interview day, we were hanging out having lunch all day, or not all day, but for lunch hour. Okay. Um, so I mean, we even if even if you know one of you wants to be uh, a, a social media advisor for a company, and my company doesn't offer that, I can let you know. Oh, well, I saw. I actually talked to so and so at X Y Z company, and I know they have a department with that. Here's their contact information. Okay, so it can't hurt to, uh, if you see other employers on campus, to still network with them. This is an example of an elevator pitch, okay? I'm Mary Smith. I'll be graduating from Purdue University in May with a degree in marketing, and I have a passion for the environment. I love creating outside-the-box marketing strategies for new products, especially environmentally sensitive ones. Last semester, while interning for a local firm, I created an aggressive marketing campaign for a new product which improve their sales. Kind of short, quick, about 30 seconds, tells um, who she is, where she's at in her career, what she can offer a company. Okay, so it's uh, kind of like a mini, uh, mini sales pitch to sell yourself to them, okay? And take note of this, because we're gonna provide some examples later, and we might want some students to to want to practice theirs on us too, okay? So, branching your brand, okay? In order to take your brand into other arenas, you need to make strategic connections. So network, okay? How many people here have LinkedIn? About half. For those of you who don't, I would highly suggest getting a LinkedIn. Um, it's a social, a quick professional social media way uh, to kind of get your face and name out there. It's almost like, a, um, like an online resume system, sort of. I can tell you my company and other recruiters actively recruit students through LinkedIn. You can also search for jobs on LinkedIn, um, which is awesome. I have found um, that some companies will post jobs on LinkedIn that may not post them on other um, job boards. So sometimes it's, you can have a, a little bit of a more, uh, a little bit of a better advantage if you use LinkedIn for job searching. So um, again, we'll get back to the networking, but LinkedIn is a great way when you meet a recruiter you can connect with them on LinkedIn and kind of keep touch. You can message through that. So I would highly suggest doing that. And also, make a list of three people or parties who would be beneficial in the success of your brand. Okay? For each of them, create a message about your brand and then outline the proper channel for communicating the message. So kind of make a plan of who you want to reach out to, what you want the message to say, and how you're going to get that message to them. Okay, so again, just getting that brand out there. So for instance, a potential employer. So say there's an employer on campus, so say TQL's on campus, and you're dying to work for TQL, okay? You want TQL to know about what you can offer and that what the positions we offer align with your skill sets. So you want to let TQL know that you're the perfect fit for my company, okay? How do you get that message across? Channel of communication, what, what I've kind of put here is companies are on campus all the time, whether it be a tabling event, an info session, um, events like this, uh, mock interviews, career fair, it's huge. Research on career services website, follow them on um, Twitter, Facebook. When I'm coming on campus, usually we'll post it. Um, and whenever they're gonna be on campus for events, make sure you're there. Go and introduce yourself, hey, um, 
My name is Joe Smith. I know you're hiring for a logistics sales account executive. I'm a junior looking for an internship. I just wanted to reiterate my interest. I'm going to be at career fair, so I'm looking forward to signing up for on-campus interviews. Short, quick, to the point. So career fair, I'm going to be expecting him, right? I'm going to be looking for him, and if he doesn't come, I'm probably going to remember that, uh, especially since he made that special effort. So with career fair, I'll be waiting for him. Um, see him there, I'll get him signed up for on-campus interviews. So it's a great way um, to free opportunity to get FaceTime with an employer, okay? So that's just an example for a potential employer that maybe might be on campus. For somebody who isn't on campus, um, apply online, follow them on Twitter, follow them on Facebook. Um, if they have Instagram, follow them on Instagram. <laughs> Some companies do. Um, search for HR recruiting professionals within that company on LinkedIn. Connect with them. Message them, hi, I'm, I'm Joe Smith I'm from Miami University. I'm graduating, looking for a sales internship. Um, I actually applied online. I wanted to follow up and see what the next steps in the process are. So he just sent an email directly to the HR manager there who is probably going to pull his resume. He has that go-getter mentality, something that we look for in sales. So um, that's kind of both ways, both on campus and off campus. Um, an influential professional. So this could be somebody, a professor, a mentor, um, maybe somebody in career services, okay? So what the message you want to get across to them is, I am deserving of a recommendation on your behalf. So you basically want to ask them to be a reference for you, to kind of back you up when you're applying for jobs. Um, you can email them, call them, um, connect them on LinkedIn, <laughs> have a personal and professional relationship with them. So Build rapport. Be friendly with them. You know, if you want them to recommend you, keep in touch and have that professional network um, uh, in, in place. Prove your worth with them. Make sure that they know about your brand and they can accurately represent your brand if needed in a recommendation. And step six, okay, going beyond the brand. So once you get started on this, your brand will become popular. You need to look for ways for it to sell itself. Create a sense of consistency. So give people reasons to qualify your brand and message as an authority, even when you are not available to speak on it. So like I was saying, join specific student uh, organizations that are related to the brand that, that you want to be a part of. Um, continue to network with your uh, professional contacts. Keep in touch. Say, so, yeah, I just wanted to follow up. Um, How's your family doing? What's going on? Yeah, I'm still searching for a sales position. If you haven't heard of anything, let me know. Keep top of mind, okay? So you want, for instance, say, I go and I talk to Jess. I'm saying, hey, you have any referrals? I'm looking for somebody to fill this one last sales opportunity we have. And Jess is one of your professional connections, and you have built a thorough, strong brand with her. You're going to be top of mind for her. So even whenever you're not around, she may say, oh, yeah. Joe Smith, he was just in my office yesterday. He's been looking for a sales job. I think he'd be a great fit for your company. That's what you want. You want people to work for you. You want your network to pass your name along. Um, that way you don't even have to get on a job search board to find a position, right? Um, never give anyone a reason to doubt the reliability of your output. Okay? Again, Miley Cyrus, <laughs> brand damage, right? Um, so try to keep a positive brand. Um, and embrace opportunities for improvement. Always keep trying to get better. Go to mock interviews, go to resume builders, um, or resume critiques. Um, you know, in, in there you can still continue to build your brand, but it shows that you want to be developed professionally as well, and that way you can enhance your brand. Uh, and then one last quote here. Your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. So keep that in mind. OK, um, this is the SMART uh, personal brand goal. So this is something kind of fun, so specific. Um, this is a way to set goals with your brand um, to see if it's working. So S is for specific. Goals should be straightforward and emphasize what you want to happen. Specifics help us to focus our efforts and clearly define what we're going to do. Measurable. So choose a goal with measurable progress so you can see the changes occur. So for instance, um, you kind of throw your brand out there and you want to have three recommend or three um, kind of on LinkedIn, you can have where people can write specific comments about you on LinkedIn. So say you want to, your goal is to have three um, if endorsements, endorsements on LinkedIn from professional advisors. So 
maybe in part of getting your brand out there, you'll kind of let them, this is what I'm looking for. If you could write me a recommendation or an endorsement on LinkedIn, I would greatly appreciate it. So your goal is, you know, you ask professional references or your network, professors, mentors, whoever it may be, to do that for you. That way when employers are looking at your LinkedIn, they see endorsements. Oh, this person is uh, straightforward. They've been to resume critiques. They, whatever your mentor writes about you and your endorsement. So your measurable is you want three endorsements. So see if your brand's working. See if you're networking enough. Did you get three endorsements? Something kind of, kind of simple, realistic way to measure that. Um, and there's many other ways you can. That's just kind of top of mind for me, but attainable. When you identify goals that are most important to you, you begin to figure out ways you can make them come true. Okay? You develop attitudes, abilities, skills, and financial capacity to reach them. And realistic. So it's, this, that doesn't mean easy. It means a goal that you can do. So be sure to set goals that you can attain with some effort, but something you still have to work for. And set the bar high enough for a satisfying achievement. So something that's going to be worthwhile, something that's going to make you feel really good. Okay? Because all it's going to do is help you in building that brand. Um, and timely. Set a time frame for that goal. That way you don't lose track of it. Okay? Put an endpoint in your goals. It gives you a clear target to work toward. All right, well, I'm going to pass it off to Jess here to talk a little bit more about career fair. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So again, like a lot of things that Ashley had talked about, you could apply for career fair, you can apply in your whole professional networking institution. So basically, we actually have the statistic that people that get jobs, get jobs 70 to 80% of the time through someone that they know. That's a high, high number, right? So thinking, hey, I really liked what Ashley had to say today. I think TQL sounds kind of neat. I go look at them online. And then I say, oh yeah, I realize TQL is down in Cincinnati. They've got some other locations that I'm really interested in. I see that their average age for their sales position is 28. The average age of their management is 38. That seems like a really good place for me to start. It seems like a fun, great company. They work really hard, but they have a lot of fun too. I'm going to email her and tell her, Ashley, I really enjoyed your presentation the other night, and I look forward to seeing you at Career Fair. I'm sure you would probably remember something like that and say, oh, I look forward to seeing Jess at Career Fair because she had reached out to me to say that, one, I did that research, and then, two, I showed that I was assertive. And she talked about that TQL is looking for those people that are assertive, proactive. All companies are looking for that. Even if it's not just in their mission statement or in their values, all companies like to see, are you reliable? Did you say that you were going to follow up with me and you did? They'll mark that on kind of your checklist. You know, did you do those things that you said you were going to do? So for Career Fair, um, it is next Wednesday, if you did not know, this very upcoming Wednesday. It is from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. in Millette Hall. So it's over by Talawanda. You'll be able to walk in. Is anyone here a first-year student? I know Ashley had some people raise hands. No first-year students? If you don't want to admit it, I'm going to say this anyway. Um, you can definitely come to Career Fair as a first-year student. What we are doing is that we are welcoming first year students to come explore Career Fair. We're going to have employers that are categorized as first year friendly employers, that they are willing to talk to first year students and maybe they don't have an internship or a job for you yet, but they're willing to say, hey, these are some of the values that are part of our organization. This is what I recommend that you do in the next two years because our internships require a 3.0 and junior status, that you can do these things and you would be a great viable candidate for us. So those ones going to different events like that, even if they're first year, or maybe even a sophomore, and you're like, do I even need an internship yet? What am I supposed to be doing? A lot of times people in the past said, I got my one internship, I'm good to go. Now we're saying, get two internships, get three internships, job shadow. Go out there and make those connections, because if you try things out and you see, hey, this is a really great fit for me, potentially some of those companies could hire you on, and then you don't have to go through that whole recruitment process. That's kind of nice, right? All your friends are sitting around having to do all their coursework and all their job interviews, and you're like, I already got a job set up because I did so well and impressed people so much during my job internship. Or maybe you go to a company and you say, hey, I tried out this company. I thought it was going to be a great fit for me. I hated it. That's OK. Being able to say, these are the things that I liked and these are the things that I didn't like is also very, very valuable when you're interviewing because you can talk about those things with employers. And a lot of employers are very, very honest about their culture because they want to make sure that you're a good fit for the company because it's timely, costly for them to hire somebody that's only going to stay there for a year or two. So they're trying to find the best fit for their company too. So finding that out about yourself is going to be really valuable. Um, so knowing those things when you're going to career fair. So attire, um, be neat and well-groomed, shower, brush your teeth, 
all those normal things you would do. Um, men, we do recommend a suit or a sports coat and a tie. If you don't have those things, that's okay. If you have a dress shirt and slacks, you can wear those things. We definitely recommend wearing nice shoes um, to career fair. For women up there, we can see suit, a blouse, and a skirt. You are going to be standing the whole time. So it's not something where it would be like an interview setting where you're going to sit down and have a conversation. You're going to be standing. You're going to be waiting in line. So make sure that you're wearing a comfortable wear pair of shoes. Don't wear a pair of heels, women, that you're going to be wearing uptown. Don't do that. Um, one, it's a little too flashy. And then two, you're going to be standing there waiting in line. So you want to be able to walk and not be tiptoeing around because you can't walk anymore or getting blisters. Um, no jeans. If you have questions about, hey, I've got you know, a red shirt, I really want to represent Miami, and I've got a blazer to go over it, and khakis, is that going to be a good fit? I would say, sure, that's great. You can wear different things that would represent yourself. Um, so kind of thinking, too, different companies will also be wearing different things to career fair. So Ashley here, this is what she wears to work. You can stand up if you want. This is what Ashley wears to work on a daily basis. They're a casual environment. They um, pride themselves in being able to wear casual things to work because they're comfortable, they're working late, all those things. This is what I wear to work. I'm not going to show up um, to my university and interact with some of our other employers if I'm not going to be in business casual. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sit down. So that's something. So when you're at career fair, you might actually see a lot of the recruiters that might be in polos and jeans because they're representing their company. They've got their company name on their polo. Um, so just thinking that they have a job, right? They've already got a job. You don't have a job yet. So you want to put your best foot forward. And what I always say is your best conservative self. So if you look in the mirror before career fair and you think, I look sexy, you probably need to change. That is my recommendation. You can ask us again if you, have any, if you need any tips, if you think this is OK. Um, let me know. Um, and then avoid chewing gum. Gum is not really a good thing. Anytime you're interviewing, bring some mints, things like that would be helpful. A lot of jewelry, especially gonna be, since you'll be talking to people, shaking hands. If you have a lot of jewelry on, then it's going to get in the way of those conversations. Um, so perfume and cologne, we put this on here, and a lot of people kind of get confused because we say, don't wear too much perfume, don't wear too much cologne. Have you ever had anyone come to you and it's overpowering Ashley? And she's like, we're in a small space here, right? You need to be able to make sure that they're not only focused on what you smell like, but they're listening to what you have to say and representing yourself. So go easy on the cologne and the perfume, something that we always recommend. Um, so what to bring with you? Bring <laughs> your resume with you. So if you do not have resume paper yet, go to Walmart today or tomorrow. You can go tomorrow. Too. But resume paper is kind of hard to find in Oxford. You can get it at Walmart. You can get it at the Print Center. But usually resume paper comes in about stacks of about 50 to 100. You do not need 50 to 100 resumes for career fair. Buy a pack with some of your friends or keep it for future use. So resume paper, if you've never seen it, is something that's a little bit thicker, more like um, cardstock. And the reason we recommend that is as Ashley is gathering different resumes throughout the day, if you gave her your resume on a normal sheet of paper, that's going to get all crinkled up by the end of the day. Um, so it's just something that's a little bit harder. It has a watermark on it. Um, usually using white, tan, or a light gray. Don't use anything that's away from those colors because as you're printing out your resume, it's not going to be represented well on there. And then if she goes back to TQL and makes a copy of it, it's going to be hard for some of those things to transfer if it's not in those colors. Um, a notepad and a pen or pencil for notes. So you can bring a Miami folder. You can bring one of those black pad folios. If you have one of those things, you can just bring your career fair book. Um, so something to bring with you, the career fair book, I say bring that. Again, you can highlight the different companies that you want to visit. And each time you go to one of those companies, if you've done research about them online and you say, oh, Ashley, I really am interested in this sales position that you have here. Can you tell me more? I usually recommend before you get in line for the next recruiter or employer that you're going to be talking to, actually look at your notes beforehand. Because you want to be able to go up there and list the specific internship or job that you want to talk to them about. Don't just say, oh, yeah, I can't really remember that name of that internship that you have, but it's the one that you do some marketing. And they're like, we have four internships that do marketing. Which one are you really interested in? They want to know that you've done your research, that you're prepared, and you're on the ball. So keeping notes either in your book or in a folder and reviewing that right before you go out is going to be important. Um, so again, a lot of employers give out different pieces of information to you. 
some of them might say, it's been really, really great to meet you. I actually cannot take your resume. Everybody needs to apply online through our HR website. Don't get offended if they say they cannot take your resume. Some legally cannot do that. So say, great, thank you. I'll make sure I apply online. They might give you a business card or a sheet of paper. You want to have a place to make sure you put that, and then you make sure you follow all those directions explicitly that they say. Um, one of the recruiters from Cincinnati Children's Hospital, he comes all the time. He gives people a business card that simply says, apply online with your resume, your cover letter, your unofficial transcripts, they're just copy and paste your transcript, and three references. He says about 50% of the people get those four things wrong. For him, he's like, why would I put this person through the process if they cannot follow these four simple things that I told them to do? Whether it's not including three references, whether it's including five references, whether it's not uploading their unofficial transcript. So be very careful if the recruiters are giving you instructions that you follow those explicitly because they want to make sure is this person paying attention to what they're being asked to do or are they a little bit too laid back for what we're looking for? Are our customers going to appreciate someone like that that's not willing to follow those directions and get things right the first time? So it's very, very important. Some of them do that on purpose to kind of test you and see what you would act like in a situation that has a lot going for it. Um, so reviewing the information about their participating employers, you've got that booklet there. Also in this PowerPoint that I'm going to be sending out, there is also a link online, which is nice because you can look at the different companies' websites. You can see who they're recruiting. You can see if they do indeed require an online application. You can see um, what positions they're posting for. So it's all right there for you. Um, so some of our employers, get pretty upset if you go up to them and you say, hey, Ashley, I'm really interested in TQL. And Ashley might say, great, what do you know about TQL? You're like, oh, I don't know anything about TQL. You want to have usually, I'd say, one or two main points, again, that you remember about the company that you can go up and say, Ashley, when I was looking through your website, I saw that your logo is, we're chosen because we're driven. I believe that I'm a really driven individual because I was able to recruit 15 more members to my sorority this year than they've done in the past three years. So I think that's something that's really unique about me that I could bring to your company because I know that you do a lot of recruitment and reaching out to other customers. So kind of thinking again about a specific example like that that a recruiter might be interested in hearing about. Never lie. Don't make up anything that you haven't done um, because people check on those things. And that is definitely something that's going to get thrown out. You know, if there's something that you exaggerated on your resume about something that you did or you did accomplish, if they start checking those references and they would say, no, they didn't do that. Someone else was responsible for that program. Or they only raised $1,000 for that program. They didn't raise $10,000 for that program. Um, so again, as we had talked about before, come talk to us in career services. Get your resume checked over. Talk with us about your experiences. What things that you have that would be transferable to different types of positions. So that's something that I talk a lot about with College of Arts and Science majors. A lot of you I know are those majors. Thinking about that you've got coursework that can back up what you're doing, but then you also have experiences in and outside of the classroom. Communication skills. How have you been able to communicate in writing? Did you market something for one of the student organizations or, that you're in? How have you demonstrated critical thinking? Did, were you able to do that in a project? Were you able to do that in a lab? Were you able to do that when you were a waiter over the summer and you had to deal with customer situations when your boss was out sick? Um, being able to communicate, again, with people that you don't really know. How have you been able to do that? And thinking about ways to put that on your resume. We can help you with all those things. Um, so for career fair, prioritizing those companies that you want to speak with. So again, you saw that career fair is 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Most people are not there the whole time. Um, you do not have to go for four hours to career fair. I usually recommend making a list about eight to 10 employers that you would say, these people seem like they would be a good fit for me. I've looked at them online. They've got some opportunities that seem like a good fit for me as well. If you saw a company, um, TQL, she said that they're recruiting both for internships and full time. But let's say this year, they didn't have any internships. But you still said, hey, I'm a sophomore, and I'm still interested in TQL. Still go talk to that recruiter and say, I still am really interested in what you have to offer. I saw on your website, again, showing that you did research, that you're not going to be offering internships this year. What would make me a viable candidate for when I'm applying to a full-time position in two years? What are your recommendations that you have? And then you get it right from that employer that they would say, I need you, based on what your resume has right now, I need you to increase your GPA 
So a 3.2. You've only got a 2.8 right now, so I would say forego all your other activities and work on your GPA. Not everyone's going to say that, but it's kind of nice to hear directly from those employers to hear what suggestions they have. And then when you go back to that employer the next year, you can say, I've been really working on my GPA. You can see that I've got a 3.0 right now. I'm confident that I'm going to be able to have a 3.2 next year when I apply for the full-time position. Again, making sure that you listen to what they have to say and staying connected with them, showing how you're progressing. Um, so prioritizing who you want to speak with, review their websites, bring their notes. Um, different people have different <coughs> tactics. If, there are, if you have a short amount of time that you can come to career fair, definitely talking to those employers that you want to talk to first, because sometimes there's really long lines. A company like Procter & Gamble, that a lot of you have heard about, P&G, there's going to be a line maybe 15 or 20 minutes long. You might only talk to them for five minutes. And you might thought, oh, I've got an hour to go to career fair. I'm going to talk to five different people. And then you realize, wow, this one company took me 25 minutes. Now I've only got one more company to go to before I go to class. So if you know you have a short amount of time, make sure you prioritize that. If you've got a little bit longer, um, some people like the tactic of, I'm going to go to a company that I'm, I'm still really excited about. I've done my research. I've got my notes. But it's not my top, top company. I'm going to try out my elevator speech. I'm going to get on the <coughs> ball. I'm going to get in the groove of things. And if I mess that one up, that's OK, because they weren't my very, very top company. So some people like that tactic as well. It kind of depends on what you're interested in for. Again, don't ignore employers that you've never heard of before. I think maybe about 10 people raised their hand that they heard of TQL. Go on some of those websites that you can see, hey, they're recruiting my major, or they're recruiting all majors. And I fit into that category. So I want to see what they have to offer. I want to go talk to them. Because sometimes being in a big corporate environment with a company that maybe other people know is not going to be the best fit for you. Um, there's you know, people that I know that have done, I work with engineering students. They do an internship at GE Aviation. A lot of people heard of them. They're like, I don't like jet engines. I don't want to help the military. So they're like, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to work for them for the rest of my life? I'm like, no, there's thousands of engineering firms where you can do more of what you're interested in. So don't limit yourself to companies that you've just heard of. Really look and see what majors they're recruiting, what opportunities they have for you. Um, a tip, the busiest time is between that 3 to 5 time. If you are able to come around 2, that's great. It gets kind of busy right when you're coming in. Have your student ID ready, because we actually swipe all the students just to keep track of um, who's coming, what majors are coming, so we can kind of advertise for the next year. Around 5 o'clock, let's say, I don't think Ashley leaves early. But for example, some of our recruiters, if they only have 10 interview spots, that very next day we'll talk about the next day interviews. If they only have 10 interview spots and they found 20 students that they talked to by 5 p.m. and they're like, we've got to narrow down these 20 students and we've only got 10 spots, they might leave. They might not stay past 5 p.m. We really encourage them to. We have them take certain surveys. We get them, try to get them to stay. But if they found a really good pool, they might leave. So we do recommend going early um, to make sure that you have the opportunity to talk to as many as you possibly can. Um, and again, that online application, making sure you follow any directions. So Ashley had talked about her examples of the elevator pitch. Um, so shaking hands. So we're going to show you an example here. Um, has anyone been given suggestions of how to shake hands before in the past? What, what were you suggested to do? Perfect. So firm, look in the eye. So basically, is anyone here left-handed? Anyone left-handed? It's a couple people. Great. So you are going to shake hands with your right hand. I'm going to tell you that right now. You're always going to shake hands with your right hand. It's just sort of what happens um, in a business setting. If At Career Fair, we don't have name tags. But if you ever have a name tag, you wear it on the right-hand side. Because when you're shaking hands with people, you actually are extending your right hand out, and then they can see your name tag really easily. Then you're looking them in the eye, giving a good, firm handshake. Um, again, if you kind of mess up the handshake, offer your hand at the end after you've had that conversation, because you could potentially make up for it. Sometimes, you know, you just go a little too far. You don't grab their hand right. Just trying to make that up. Um, so if you want tips for handshaking, we can be here afterwards. We'll give you some tips if you want to try it out on us. Um, but definitely introducing yourself, then taking those one to three minutes to describe yourself your career interests, the opportunities you seek. Um, I'm going to give you some tips here that we've seen from recruiters. So you're going to go up. You're going to have your resume with you, um, out with your portfolio. And you want to have your resume in your hand, ready to go. 
because some recruiters might really be interested in the elevator pitch. They might want to hear all about that. Other ones might say, you know, hi, I'm Joe Smith from TQL, and then reach out their hand and kind of insert that they want your resume. You're going to hand them your resume, and they might start reading it. I'm going to start looking at, oh, I see that you're a psychology major. Oh, that's great that you got a 3.0. Oh, I also was in MUSEF. You're not going to just start giving your elevator pitch if they're reading your resume, right? Like, that's going to be kind of weird. But other ones, um, you know, they're going to kind of be waiting. They're going to be sitting back a little bit. They're going to maybe be standing there with their hands crossed, not really looking that engaged, right? Some are, some are pretty nice. A lot are nice. Other ones, that's their tactic, to see how you respond to someone, especially in sales positions, um, how you respond to someone that maybe is not that welcoming, not that excitable. How can you get them to remember you? Um, so that's just kind of some tips that I tell people not to be surprised about. Most of the time, people are pretty welcoming. Hey, how are you? Oh, that's great that you're an econ major. Did you have this professor? A lot of the people that come to career fair are Miami alum. So don't be surprised if they say, oh my gosh, what hall do you live in? How's the semester going? You can have that type of conversation with them. Um, so that's definitely fine. But kind of listen to what the recruiter's saying. And again, a lot of times, just asking them, like, hey, what can you tell me about TQL? Again, those recruiters might turn it back and say, this is what we're looking for, but what did you learn from your research about TQL? What stood out to you about us from your research that you decided to come to our booth out of the 270 booths here? So definitely, definitely be prepared for that question because that's going to be a conversation that's important. We're going to talk about the elevator pitch. We're going to show you the example um, a little bit later. Um, so ask questions. In that book, in the very front, there's ideas for questions. Um, definitely ask, hey, it was really great to meet you. I saw that I submitted the online application. What else can I do? And they might say, that's great. We have to go back to a couple other career fairs. We're going to be calling people for phone interviews at the end of October. They might give you a great time like that, and you kind of know when it's available. And you can say, great, that's perfect. I look forward to hearing from you then. Getting their business cards. So that's a really great way to end that conversation. I enjoyed the conversation with you. I appreciated all the information that you gave me. Shake their hand again and say, can I have your business card? Sometimes some recruiters don't give out their business card unless someone asks for it. Again, just kind of another strategy to see if you're assertive, if you're going through that process. The reason you want a business card is so that you can follow up with that employer and say, I really enjoyed talking to you about my experience with um, After Dark program and how I got involved with that. And it really helps me get acclimated to campus. And I was able to market for that. And it gave me some great opportunities that I think I can contribute to your company. I enjoyed that conversation. So sending them an email that night or the next day, we're going to talk about why. And then you can actually follow up additionally um, on LinkedIn. Connect with them on LinkedIn. If they say, hey, connect with me on LinkedIn, I'd really appreciate that. People will say that to people all the time, and then 5% of people do that. So really following up. If they invite you to do something like that, follow up, because they're going to remember, again, that, purple, that person followed up with me. Taking those brief notes and then utilizing those notes to follow up with the employer. I've had so many students that have said, I thought I would be able to remember those four conversations I had. That's not that hard to remember four conversations. But I can't remember what conversation I had from Jess um, at you know, um, David J. Joseph and the one I talked to Ashley about at TQL. I can't remember the difference. And now I don't want to talk about something that I didn't talk about with one of them or bring up that conversation. So definitely, absolutely take those notes. Um, so the body language, good pressure, talk loudly talk clearly. Career fair is pretty loud, pretty crowded. So you might be pretty close to people. Um, so if someone says that they can't hear you or to speak up, definitely speak up. Because they want to hear about you. They want to know about you. So make sure they can hear you clearly. Um, smile. I know it can be really, really scary to go to career fair and you might be nervous. But it's a conversation. You're trying it out. You're trying to get them to know you, your normal self. Um, so again, that best conservative self, you're not going to talk about how you went out to Uptown last night. You're not going to talk about that. But you're going to be talking about all those positive things that relate to their company. But again, these are going to be people that you're working with. So you don't want to feel uncomfortable around them. So it can be nerve wracking, but try to enjoy the interaction. Uh, so we talked about the thank you notes. You can include a copy of your resume just for their reference. And then again, follow up with the directions that they had given you. 
So interview day at Millette, some of the employers actually come back the very next day and have what we call interview day at Millette. <coughs> so some of them might say during that conversation, actually, I really enjoyed our conversation today. What does your schedule look like tomorrow? And they're like, oh, I got class. I got to have lunch with a friend. The reason they're asking that is because they actually have an interview schedule set for the very next day. And they'll say, we want to invite you for an interview tomorrow. So that's something that some of the employers do. They have you come back, go through that first round of interview process, because they can talk to a lot of people in a short amount of time. And they're already here in Oxford. So that's something that they do. So make sure you know your schedule for Thursday. That you can say, yep, I don't have class till 12 PM, so I could have an interview any time before then. Um, for interview day, you would come back. You have a waiting area, kind of like this room is set up. It's just a waiting area. And the employers would come out and get you. Um, so that's why I say, send those thank you notes right after career fair, because some of the employers wait until 6 PM, get all the resumes that they've talked to. They've been marking them across throughout the day. These are the people that we like. These are people we were maybe about. These are the people that don't meet our GPA requirement. Then they might be looking through those resumes and say, we've got 15 spots to fill. Who are going to be our 15? And they might even be emailing you or calling your cell phone that night, career fair night, next Wednesday, at, you know, between 6 PM, 9 PM, and saying, hey, are you free tomorrow? So that kind of happens. So it's kind of nice, because you can get a lot of these first round things done. So those would be good things to kind of talk about, be prepared. Um, if you haven't attended basic interviewing skills, it was previously called Career Services 101. So if you've done it any time during your tenure at Miami, you're good to go. Um, if you haven't done it, Talk to me at the end. I will send you the video for that. Because to participate in that interview day and on-campus recruiting, that is a mandatory program or video that you have to watch. Um, so definitely let me know. I'll put your name on our list. Um, so here, we're going to just give you kind of an example of what an interaction at career fair would be like. So I'm going to walk in front of this light here. Um, so I have Ashley here, be how she normally is as a recruiter, kind of waiting around um, with that. And then I'm going to pretend to be a student. Sound good? Let's give you some examples. Excellent, so I'm going to try to do this. So hi, how are you? Hi, good, how are you? Good. My name is Jess. I am currently a communications major here at Miami University. I also have a minor in political science. And the reason I'm coming to TQL today is I saw that your uh, mission statement talked about being a really driven individual. Mm -hmm. And something that I had the opportunity to do was I am the vice president of communications of my sorority. So I was able to market to different members um, throughout our group. And we actually were able to recruit 15 sophomores before formal recruitment. So I thought that something was really neat, really important. And I thought I could bring that to TQL, because I know that you have to do a lot of reaching out to different organizations, um, talking about the different <coughs> trucking companies. And I thought that would be a good fit for me that I could use that experience. Um, what do you kind of think is a good experience that maybe TQL is looking for? I think what you offer was great. Mm -hmm. um, TQL is very, we are a sales organization. So okay. we're looking for people who have that driven mentality, who are go-getters, competitive, disciplined, yep. resilient. So yeah. that was a great example. Do you have a copy of your resume? I do. So you would have your resume right here. And so I would give Ashley my resume. I'm going to kind of glance it over and see, oh, you were in Kappa Delta sorority. Yes, I was. I was in that mm -hmm. sorority whenever I was in college. Yeah. Keep on going. Mm -hmm. and just kind of carry the conversation from there, to be honest. Um, I'll ask if you have any additional questions. I'll kind of let them say, or I'll ask, so are you specifically interested in sales? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm hiring for. And if she says, well, I'm kind of looking for recruiting, or yes, I'm really interested in sales. And I'll say, OK, great. Well, this, these are the positions we're hiring for. Mm -hmm. Does this sound like something you may be interested in? And you'll say, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So I'll give her a position description. And depending on how it went, if um, she was very confident and um, articulate, a great communicator, somebody who I felt could be a good culture fit for the company, I would go ahead and invite her to sign up for our on-campus on interviews. Um, usually, recruiter for my company, we save those on-campus interviews for top candidates, so people that right off the bat were like, oh, I think they'd be really good. Um, and sometimes it's hard to tell, so for those candidates that we're not so sure about, we may not invite you back the next day, but that doesn't mean that we won't schedule a phone interview with you later on. So hey, companies don't invite you to do that. Don't don't automatically write them off, because um, you still can hear something. And still follow up. Still have a go-getter. Still um, uh, let them know that you want the job, because the more confident you are and the more mm -hmm. you show that you want that position, then the more um, likely they're going to be to give you a chance. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Do you want to see another example? 
Yeah? Sure. Okay. Okay. So I'll pretend to be the recruiter this time. It's all good? Yeah. You can Hi. Hi, my name's Ashley. Um, nice to meet you. I'm a senior here in Miami, mm -hmm. and I'm graduating in the spring. Perfect. Uh, my major's in public relations. I'm not 100% sure what I want to do with that, but I've considered a career in sales. Okay, great. So I know, um, I saw in the book you guys are hiring for a sales career, mm -hmm. and I wanted to see um, if we could talk more about that. I know that my skills um, from being a previous student athlete Great. Um, have trained me to be disciplined, resilient, and very motivated, mm -hmm. and I I'm, um, read that those are skills that you're looking for in an employee. We are. Yeah. So that's great that you're a student athlete. We've hired a lot of student athletes from Miami University. Um, with that, you talked about your ability to be resilient. Mm -hmm. Do you have a specific time you could think of that demonstrated how you were resilient? Sure. Um, I can tell you at practice. Um, yeah. There were times when our entire team had to shoot layups, and if anybody missed a layup, we had to uh, run laps. <laughs> so I can tell you, uh, after multiple misses of layups with uh, throughout the team, we've run a lot of laps, and we've just kept on going. We wanted to win and make the coach happy. So Yeah, perfect. Great. Do you have your resume with you? I do. Great. Thank you. So I'm looking through a resume. Um, this is really great. Your GPA is really great, so that's good to know. How do you kind of manage your time to keep such a high GPA? Sure. Well, right now, um, I make sure I put school first. Yep. I have okay. to work because I have to have money for gas and help pay for, um, yeah. help, uh, pay for my uniforms, things like that with the mm -hmm. sports. Um, so I, I try to manage my time equally between that, but I focus on school because I know, um, you know this is ultimately, ultimately what's going to help me with my career. Yeah. So, yeah. Definitely. That's really important. That's a really great example. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, did you see that we have the online application that you have to submit? I did. I actually okay. submitted that last night. Perfect. So let me mar mark that down on your resume here that we can kind of take a check for that. So what we're going to be doing is we have a couple other career fairs to go to mm -hmm. um, throughout the month of September. We're going to be taking all the different resumes that we have and we're going to be reaching out for Skype interviews great. starting the first week of October. Um, so if you don't hear from us by then, definitely um, you have my business card right here. You can take that. <laughs> Thank and you. give me a call, give me an email, let me know. Um, sometimes it takes us a little bit longer to get everything get gathered, but I think you've got some good things on here, and we look forward to hearing from you. Perfect. I'll be Great. in touch. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> cool. So does that kind of help? So again, like it can be a conversation. So things that you have on your resume, they might pull out specific things on your resume that they can say, tell me more about this. What did you like about this? Um, why was that important to you? Because they're trying to find out, again, about you, um, kind of see what that's at. So those are kind of the ideas that we have. Thank you. So those are ideas that we have for today. Um, if you have an example of an elevator pitch and you want to run it by me, we also have Mary Beth there in the back. She can wave her hand. She um, is the advisor that works with all of the humanities and social science students in the College of Arts and Science. So if you do want to talk to her about um, your elevator pitch or things like that, and I'm going to invite you all. Ashley's here. If you're interested in TQL, come up to her afterwards and say, hey, I really enjoyed hearing from you. Look out for me at Career Fair. I'm going to challenge more than five of you to do that. Because um, again, you know, we say all those things. Follow up with those people. Tell them your name. Reach out to them. Even if you're not interested in TQL, you've kind of heard about it, and you're like, mm, I'm not into sales, I'm not into logistics. That's OK. You can still go introduce yourself and let her know that you enjoyed her presentation. A lot of times, people like to hear that. Um, so let her know all those things. If you do have questions, we have our contact information um, here. Make sure you're turning in your evaluation form for us. That'd be great. Um, here's our contact information. That'll be sent out in the PowerPoint. Are there specific questions that the, you have for the entire group that people want to ask right now? You can ask Ashley, too. It's not me. <laughs> yes, sir. You can. If it's open for you to submit online, if you have the opportunity, if you've gotten your resume critiqued and everything, and you're set to go, you can submit that online. Because that's also another way to show that you're on top of things. To say, yep, I saw that you need an online application. I submitted that already. So a lot of people, that's kind of another check to say, yeah, we don't even have to wait for your process. So that would be important. Cool. Mm -hmm. What's like the biggest, most frequent mistake that students make in a career fair? Um, do you have an answer for that? Um, yeah, yeah. What, one thing that, um, and automatically when it happens, I'm just like, oh. <laughs> um, when you go, oh, TQL, what do they do? Mm -hmm. Or just no research. And I'm just like, okay, next. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, um, I'd rather spend my time with somebody who did the research who's truly interested. So, um, and again, if you don't know, that's okay. But at least kind of fake it. Reading your book, 
and say, oh yeah, I know you guys are the second largest 3PL out there. Can you kind of tell me a little bit more what, about what a 3PL means? That's fine. I didn't know what that meant before I started working for the company. <laughs> so um, even if you just read a little tidbit in your book and kind of use that to gain more information about the company, as long as you put in at least a touch of effort, we appreciate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say the other thing that employers um, sometimes give us feedback about, about people dressed inappropriately. And again, I'm not saying that, oh, they weren't in a suit. It's, um, you know, people that didn't look neat, didn't look groomed, um, maybe came in a t-shirt, women, um, things that were too low or too high, things like that. So that's another thing that you're not putting off a professional example of yourself. So that's something that we, again, don't want you to um, represent Miami that way. Um, again, like other certain companies, you can wear casual dress when you're there, but for Career Fair, we want you, you can never be overdressed. So that's kind of something else that we said. So that's a good question. Thank you so much.